Hello everyone and welcome back. It's good to see you here again. We're back from Iona. We've been home a few days now and uh, it's nice to be home, but we are getting a little bit itchy feet again. It's one of the problems of uh, having such wonderful scenery on our doorstep and um, wonderful places to go and see. Scotland's such an incredible place, but hopefully we'll go away soon. And with a bit of luck and fingers crossed, the weather is going to be okay. We do talk a lot about weather in our videos, but they seem to play such an important part of our travels. Uh, the weather in Scotland is endlessly changing and it's quite a wet place really overall with, with the sea and the ocean next to us all the time. Today we're going to be doing a painting of Iona, uh, that beautiful place. Um, it's, it's going to be the first drawing that I did in the last video of the vista of the beach and the, the island and the surf and the sand. Uh, a, a wonderful scene with wonderful colour in it. I'm going to paint it quite large today and it's going to be on a full sheet of imperial paper, slightly cropped in a bit. I think it's 21 by 29 inches, so a good size and uh, a lot to get your teeth into really. I quite enjoy the big size picture. There's something very impressive about when you look at a watercolour that's that size, you seem to get immersed into the painting more than a small painting, although I do like small paintings. The painting behind me here is of St Andrews. Uh, St Andrews is a lovely place. I really enjoy going to St Andrews and this is an oil painting on board. I'm just about to have an exhibition and uh, I've got to frame this painting now so that's on my next list of jobs to do while we're at home. So it's a very textural painting and I quite like the texture of, of oil paint. It's, it's a really interesting medium and I need to paint more of it and maybe video some of one or two of the paintings that I do but there's a lot of paint on that and a lot of fun to do. So here's the uh, picture that I'm doing and I've drawn it out. I'm not too sure whether that will register on the camera. Um, but it's quite, it's quite um, it's a big picture for watercolour, but a, an exciting picture to do as well. Um, I always feel a little bit nervous about take, tackling a picture, but that's just part of watercolour painting. I'm, I'm sure if you look, go to your own painting that you'll, you'll notice that you'll be a little bit nervous too, but that's just normal. Um, it, it is normal to have a little bit of trepidation when you begin a watercolour painting. So what I'm going to start with is the, is the sky, um, and I'm, I'm going to try and try and make it a bit more of an interesting sky. So uh, it's going to be more than one wash on this. So I always start off with a bit of cobalt blue. I think that's a nice colour. That's a nice sort of colour for, um, for the sky. Make sure you mix these in really thoroughly, this, these individual mo uh, washes. Uh, you don't want lumps appearing in it at all. So, you know, get a good amount of paint. It's always, it's always good to mix too much paint and too little paint. Too little paint is a terrible curse. So it's not worth doing that. I'd rather throw paints away than, than not have enough. Right, so have a little look at the picture. I, I've, been, I've been sitting down here for a few minutes just contemplating what order I'm going to do things and how I'm going to try and tackle it. So I've worked it out in my mind now and now it's just a question of going for it. Right, so top left hand corner and start putting the wash in. So really really trying to attack this thing. I'm trying to leave areas of, of the painting so to, to indicate the, the clouds, the softness of the clouds. So they're trying to, they're interesting things, clouds, and they, they do vary a huge amount. And I, I have a picture in front of me, but I'm not really completely copying the picture I'm trying to interpret as well and I'm trying to paint the clouds how I think it, they will suit the piece of paper. So, sort of making it up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of green to it. I like the change in colour. So a bit of Viridian in there now. And you see the colour changes slightly. So working along you have to work quite quickly in watercolour because you have to keep the you have to keep the paint flowing, and if if it sets, it it becomes a bit problematical. Okay, so that's quite nice, I think. Then we we'll try and get into a little bit of a little bit of cloud, and so we're, we're trying to soften the soften the clouds a little bit. Just try and get in there, and to trying to imagine a little bit of. Um, shadow going along in the cloud. So more water, softened areas, hard edges. It's a very interesting um, 
how much soft areas and how much hard areas that you need to paint. You see that's creating quite a nice effect there. So this question of going all the way along there. And I'm really just imagining this. I'm not, I don't really have something, I have something similar to what I'm painting, but I'm not really painting it as you might think. So you can see I'm trying to get a little bit of shading going on there. Hopefully you'll have a go at a big painting and see what fun they are. They are a lot of fun, I must admit. They, they do, they are exciting if your heart can take it. But they are slightly nerve-wracking as well. But we all need a challenge, don't we? We all need to, to give it a go. You see how, the, how that created that nice sort of rounded effect? But I've got to keep on going. I can't, I can't just stop. It's quite interesting how clouds have darker sections in it as well. They're not just light, fluffy things. So that's, that's a nice start. The brush that I'm using is uh, a professional watercolour brush, Synthetic, by Winsor & Newton, and it's a 13 millimetre flat wash brush. So, I'm going to introduce a bit more cloud here. There's a cloud popping in, or sort of a blue patch pop popping in, really. So I'll carry that across. That's quite nice. It's always interesting how much you can, you can do with one layer. Yeah, that's nice. I might introduce another layer, I don't know yet. You have to assess these things and it does, it does change. You know, you, one of the interesting things that I notice is that I, go, I go about painting and I think, well, that's how I'm going to do it. But sometimes even the best laid plans don't go to, don't go to order. And you have to adjust and say, well, okay, I tried that, but it's changed into this now. And that's fine as well. You don't, doesn't ha you don't have to be dogmatic and carry on with the same idea that you hoped would start it. There we go. So carry on around. And I, I think that's quite a fun sky, that. I, I, like, I quite like that. But I will be adding more to it. Maybe add a little bit more green. I always quite like... I always quite like skies going down to a bit of a green colour in the end. And the green I put was Viridian. Okay, how about that? So that's the first layer done of the clouds and I've looked at it and I'm quite pleased with that. I think it turned out pretty well as, as one wash. But I, I will add to it as well, just to bring the drama of it out a little bit, just to give the sense that the clouds are rounded. Uh, I like that. So a uh, little bit of burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and that produces a sort of darker shade, which I quite like, and mix that relatively thoroughly. Okay, so just trying to think. So we're gonna add a little bit of darkness to it, just to make it a little bit more dramatic. Quite like drama in clouds. Okay. Just trying to pick a few bits up here as well. I think drama is part of what you're looking for in painting. It's very easy just to um, paint softly and especially in watercolour. And I think watercolour is like any other medium or like any other composition really. You have to try and create the drama in pictures to make it interesting, whether that's an oil painting or a watercolour, I don't think it really matters. So I'm always looking for that dramatic effect. And I think that helped that area there, gave it a more three-dimensional nature to it. That's good. So I'm softening edges, hardening edges, just, I think the word happy accidents is a really good word. I, th I think happy accident really does put watercolour in, in the right place. That's a lot of what it is. Yep. Not too dark as well. You, you, wanna, you really want to get the right darkness in it. So these clouds on, on the left, they are totally made up. I haven't, there's no reference material to these clouds. On the right, sorry. So no reference at all. Maybe. Just 
just trying to get the right combination of brown and blue on these. Maybe don't mix them up quite as much, maybe. Maybe that's too much. Well, I don't know. It's quite fun. Just trying to create, create sort of feelings that there's shadows going on and, and the light's hitting it and it's moving along. A lot of, there's a lot of decisions to take in this. Like, if you look at this, I've made hundreds of decisions already, and that's part of what painting's all about, making these uh, in incredible numbers of decisions. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue here, just to give it the sense that the sky was peeking through as well, and it's quite fun. That's the sky peeking through, blue sky is peeking through. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I, I think that's turned out well for such a quick effect. I might just darken the top bit here down as well. Um, just to give that sense that uh, it, it blues further up. Uh, some, sometimes people suggest that why don't you just turn the board upside down, let the, let the, let the colours run downhill, but I, I quite like the second layer. I, I don't mind it. I think it provides um, some, some additional something nice as well, adding the second layer, rather than a smooth transition. And just carry on, and that's almost the sky done. Yeah, so that's the second layer at the top. Just adds depth to the clouds a bit. How about that? So the next part of the painting, I tend to work downhill really, and the next part is the mountains behind, how we're going to introduce those really. And I'm, I'm looking carefully at the colours. Obviously it's, it's never going to be as good as painting outdoors, but it was a bit tricky to paint outdoors because of the sheer distance that we had to walk. Um, so, and the weather wasn't up to it either, a lot of wind going on. So um, let's think about what I'm going to do with the colours in the distance. They blued, the, the hills I have blued, in the distance, so I'm going to try and give a bluish tone on it, and a warm tone as well, so maybe that. So here goes, right, start there, test it out. That's not too, f that's pretty close, maybe a little bit warmer, so ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit of alizarian crimson just to, and a bit of burnt umber just to warm it up a bit. So trying to get these mountains coming in, change the colour a bit. Big mountains in the distance. You, what the important part of this part is, is to get the tone right, to make sure that they are the right tone. That's what I'm really concerned with. They've changed colour a bit as well, which I quite like. And then they really start to fade out here, so they're getting lighter and lighter. So they've, they've started off a little bit dark, uh, darker, and then they've lightened and changed colour, and then they've gone lighter to fade into the distance, which I think worked quite well. The next part is the actual cliffs of, of Mull, which I'm going to paint, because they're nearer, I'm going to paint them darker. So as, they, as things disappear into the distance, they get a bit lighter. So the opposite is true. So the, these, these are going to be a bit darker. Nice colour. So a bit of warmth in it too. And here we go. So gives you a sense that this is, this is now a near thing. And there, it, it was a very flat light on the, on the subject as well. So there's no need to paint any detail on it. But I hope you get, this, get the sense that this is closer. So again, carrying on the theme of working down the picture, um, I'm going to come to this island here now, which is such an important part of this picture. Um, it's, it does provide a lot of contrast and darker values, which, which I think the picture needs. So um, I'm going to be giving the, the colours a little bit of a greenish tint. So starting at the, starting at the top. So it's a little bit of, of cabin yellow, put something in here, but I will be going giving it more bite in the second layer. So 
So more cadmium yellow, viridian, brown maybe. See the colours there mixed in? So still the same brush. Just looking at the picture carefully and trying to trying to capture it as accurately as I can. So maybe go to a bit of yellow ochre. Get that something here. Constantly changing these colours. Looking carefully. So a brown, a brown, a greener now. You see how the colours varied here. I love variation of colour. I think that's a really important part of painting. I like pictures to look interesting. That's this little spit of land that comes out. Let's go good something. Can finish that off later. So now it comes to a, an even darker section of the base of the island. Nice and dark. Remember my favourite my favorite motto in watercolour painting is keep it simple, or KISS, or in real terms, keep it simple stupid. That's what it really stands for, KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. Which I think probably refers to everything you do in life. If you overcomplicate things, it always gets a bit troublesome. troublesome. Okay, so I will add more to that later on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the C in, and it's a very varying colour. A lot of emeralds in it and uh, so I'm going to pick ultramarine blue and viridian really and maybe there's a touch of red in the distance as well so there's the, there's the ultramarine blue and the viridian and right in the distance is a very dark color so I've got to try and mix that up nice and thickly so try and get that in Give these rocks a bit of variation. Yeah, that's nice. So I like I like the ultramarine blue. And maybe a little bit of Elizabeth and Crimson as well. Why not? So nice and dark at the background. Try and get it level. So just a very simple wash on that one, trying to keep it clean more than anything else. And it, it does change colour quite a lot. Certainly not one colour at all. So the next bit I'm going to make it a little bit greener. So this bit here. Give it that nice sense of emerald. So that's viridian there. There we go. So it's a, a little bit of a lighter shade. So this, this sand bank here is reflecting the light a bit more, giving a, a more emerald and a slightly lighter color. And then it becomes darker again. So over to here. Really rich color, lovely color. Continue to vary it a bit because the, the water is shallow, deeper, shallow, deeper. So we're going to try and deepen it down and more again. So basically less water and more paint. And it's going to go in here. So I've still only used the one brush. Vary it again. So more viridian, which is the emerald colour. When you put watercolour paint down like this, th there has to be a little bit of faith that it's going to work out right. Um, you, you have to react to the painting, really. 
um, some, sometimes you can't make watercolour do what you want to do. So you have an idea and it didn't work or whatever. And that, that's when you have to sort of go with the flow and, and try and um, adjust it. So it, some, sometimes the watercolour controls you rather than the other way around. And, and you have to be okay about that too. It's a very challenging medium, watercolour. So I'm trying to keep the whole wash going all the way along. If I just worked on one piece, um, I'd, I'd lose that wash. I'd, I'd, I'd have cauliflowers coming everywhere. So you have to keep the whole wash going. That's really important. So we're going to change it again to a, a more viridian. So it's quite a big wash, this. Quite a lot of... Quite a lot of washes. And see, there, that, that's the piece there. That's an un, uh, sort of where, where the viridian didn't mix up completely. But I'm happy with that. And that's an accident. But that's fine. Um, you, you as I say, you, you have to react to, to the painting and judge whether a mistake is okay or not. And sometimes a mistake is okay. Not every time, but it, sometimes it is, as that was. I thought that was fine. So now we're getting into the surf, the waves. So I'm going to try and have leave some of the leave some of the um, the white paper showing because that's going to represent waves now. The shallowing effect. Work out where it is. So I'll be adding white paint on this as well. <whistles> Trying to work out sort of yellows a bit as well, which is interesting. So to keep it nice and light. Maybe the viridian. So I'll go back into the sea. So that was the first wash, but you're never going to get it quite right with the first wash. It is, it is a much darker sea than how I've depicted it. So I'm going to give it a little bit more colour, sort of a few more washes. Not everywhere, but sort of hinting at things where it's got darker and lighter. Yeah, that's nice. Sometimes it's quite dark where you've got the waves coming in. So here's a, here's a wave coming in here. I see how that moved into that other wash. It wasn't quite dry, but it's fine. So it's taking a squint at it all the time. Good. So that's the sea pretty much done now. And now I'm working into the, probably the most important feature of this picture, which is these rocks here. They're much darker than everything else, so they're going to provide a lot of contrast. So, um, trying to mix some colours, so ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Try and get those colours together. A bit of green as well. So let's start at the base. Got the waves crashing over these rocks as well. Yep, so just trying to capture the base of the rocks and the surf coming around it. And as they go up, they get much darker. I never could figure out why they're dark at the top, these, and so light at the bottom. I don't know why yet. Maybe somebody could tell me. But they're almost black at the top. Get them in. 
this lighter one here. Big rock here. So I'm trying to paint as freely as I can. That's the top part done. Maybe let that dry a bit and then I add the, the darker sections. So just kind of trying to get the top of the rocks now. Just let it dry for a bit. Maybe not quite enough, but. Trying to get all the shadows in. They're very rocky rocks on, on Iona's, on Iona. They, they really are jaggedy things. Just trying to hint at a lot of the details, trying to describe the shape of them. So trying to, trying to find the shadows of the rocks and pop them in. So here's, here's that pretty much done now. I'm happy with that. Now we've got to follow to the other side of the painting now. We've got the rocks coming in on the other side. So a similar process, but they are slightly different colours. They're all different colours. They're much browner rock. So let's try and get these, these rocks in. As I mentioned earlier, they're really jaggedy rocks. Not the same um, at all. They, they do vary a lot. So let's try and make these jaggedy. So I'm trying for the highlights initially, the, the mid-tones initially of it. It's just trying to get that brownish shade that they are in. So just like that. So I'll introduce dark, darkness in a minute. And then the rocks below, totally different color again. They are, they are gray. They really are gray color. So, that's, so the gray I depict as ultramarine blue and burnt umber. It's amazing what those two, and you see how gray that effect was. It's basically the same colours as this, but just in different proportions. And then one here, so the rest of it's sort of sandy colour. So. Yeah, so that's a, like an underpainting, I guess. But two, uh, two, what's, what's amazing about those two colors is that you can get such variety within just two colors. So I'll just add these other rocks, which I've just noticed down here. So it's always a question, it's, it's a two layered approach really. So you've got the, you, you've always got to break things down into the values really. So you've got um, dark, mid-tone and light. Three is quite good at times. Just trying to capture these little rocks. Some here. Okay. Now I'm just going to give the. Now I'm going to give the darker values into it, and a bit of brown as well. Not going to make it too complicated. Okay, detail is one of those fascinating subjects in painting. How much detail do you put? Or, or how much of a rod for your back do you put? That's another way of putting it, isn't it? So I try, I try and create a picture which is equally finished everywhere. So getting back to the rocks over here now, just a few hints of sort of shadows and the rocks coming in. Not too much. Just enough to tell you what it is. Just about enough, I think. And then the rocks underneath. Okay, just enough to show what it is. And I think that was just enough. 
the question that I ask is, if, if I put more work into it and more detail, is it going to get better? And I don't think so. I think that has a nice light feel to it. So the next part is the sand going all the way across here. So um, I've pretty much got the rocks in now, and now I've got to work on the sand. And the sand's an interesting part because there's not much of it. So you're, you're painting almost nothing. So perhaps a little bit of raw sienna to give that yellowy effect of, of sand. But it's not very yellow, this sand. It's, it's, it's more of a blue-toned sand. But I will introduce a little bit of yellow just to give sort of people an idea about what it is. I think if you paint it completely accurately, it's going to seem too blue. And I don't want that. I, I, want, it, I want it to seem like it is sand. Very, very white sand. So now I'm going to introduce a few um, blue sections to it, which it really is. There's a blueiness to the, to the sand. You can see that. Very pale, so the cameras don't like picking up very light stuff, so I don't know whether that's going to work. Um, yellow, maybe yellow ochre as well. Yeah, that's little flashes of... Yeah, that's quite fun. So I'm leaving sort of bits of white paper shining through as well. Yeah, give it a bit of a wash in places. So maybe more. The paper is an off-white paper as well, so there's a slight yellowness to the paper, which I'm going to bear in mind. So that's going, that's going to depict a, a sort of yellowing effect. A very interesting thing to paint in this, that you, you could easily make a mistake in this sand by overdoing it or trying to make it too blue or... There's a whole host of things I could go wrong with this bit. I know, because I've done a few paintings of this, of, uh, of, of Iona in this sand, so I have a little bit of practice at it. So it's, it's, it really is an incredibly gentle hint at it. Maybe. Maybe just give those little bit of yellow hints to it as well. People, there's sort of expectancy as well about what sand is. And uh, that little bit of yellow just helps a little bit. There we go. So now the, 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 I'm going to do the part of the wet sand where the, where, the, where the surf is stretched in a bit. And that's quite interesting. And so... Um, what colour should I put it? A little, a little bit of cobalt blue in here as well, just to give it a little bit of variation. So it's reflecting, it's more of a reflected light from the sky. And I'm trying to keep this, this whiteness here coming in because that's, that's the wave which I want to keep. And you've also got the reflection of these rocks in there, which is an interesting take. So I'll put in here. You see how the water's that's running into each other, which is fun. Try and make your painting fun. If, if, if it is fun underneath everything, then uh, you, you're going to have a lot less stress. It's important to think of watercolour as fun. So I'm trying to, trying to create the reflected light, like a mirror almost, of these rocks. Not too much, but in, enough to give the sense that it, it is reflecting in the water. So maybe just use pure, pure cobalt blue for this and see whether I can get something going there. See there's little reflections? Quite like that, that's pretty. So this is the main action of the whole painting, I think. Giving these effects. And then there's a really very much darker effect. Just a question of keeping on looking. And I think painting in watercolour, or any, any medium really, is about observation skills. Just keep on looking. Amazing what a bit of looking does. So I'm looking at the sand again, and I think it needs a few bits of work in it, just to get that variety in there. Um, I don't want it too white, and I don't want it too dark, so there's a very interesting sort of balance to take here. And so I'm just introducing a little bit of burnt umber there, to darken bits and pieces of it off. Just to give it the sense of white sand. I don't want it blue sand, I don't want it brown sand, I want white sand. That's the tricky part. 
So I'm going to head back to the mid island, that green island now, just to try and get something going on there. It's all very dry now, so um, be an interesting challenge on it. So it, it's, it's quite green at the top, so I'm going to introduce this, these green colours and create the darkness that's needed to separate it from the background. Remember, I'm mainly interested in light and dark in my painting. I'm not, the colours, the colours can be off, not too off, but they, they can be a little bit wrong as long as you've got the values right, because it's the values that really make things look real. And um, it, ultimately really important for a painting which is not detailed. So as long as the values are right, you, you can get away with quite a lot. When I say get away, I really mean have some fun with it. <laughs> not, not, you don't, I don't want you to be sort of um, laboring on things too much. So now what we're going to do with the rocks is there's, there's got a band of dark rock at the bottom where there's no vegetation at all. So we're going to try and introduce that as partly it's very dark in places. So let's, let's try and let's try and give something in here. Maybe we've got rocks here. And we've got the island, the sort of spit of land now coming in. Really quite dark. So going back to the sand now, I'm going to change my brush to a number four Raphael round brush. So the entire painting up to that point has been done with one brush. Uh, this one here, the um, Winsor & Newton mop. So it's just a question of getting the details of the sand in really. Sorry, my head keeps on bobbing in the way. Uh, so sort of, there's a lot of seaweed and all sorts of stuff on the beach, which I'm going to try and get in. Lots of different colours. Enormous amount of stuff on the beach. So what, one, of the, one of the reasons I, I paint in this simplified way is, is because I paint, I paint outdoors. And you have to develop a style which you can achieve your goal in. So if, if I have a style of ultimate, of lots and lots of detail, then I, I would never be able to finish the painting I do. So that's, that's a big reason why I do paint in this sort of simplified way, really, but still an interesting way. It's not simplified um, just for the hell of it, really. It, 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 it has a purpose. These are lots of little bits of tufts, rocks. They're everywhere on the beach. The next interesting part after this is the white paint, which sort of finishes it off. There's a lot of detail. Yeah, got to know when to stop with this. So I've had a look at the painting now, and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I, I, I look at it and say, well, what more can I do? And the only thing I really now is the white paint on it. So to try and describe the wave form, formations and, and um, the reflections a little bit more, uh, that, that's the interesting part. So with my white paint, so I've just squeezed it out now, don't want to do it any, any other time, I'm going to start adding white to it. So trying to capture the idea that it's waves coming in. It's always the interesting part, trying to, trying to finish a painting off and trying to finish it off simply as well. I, I, want, I don't want that, compli that complicated finish to it. So it's just a few touches here and there. You're sort of trying to bring the painting together now, trying to, um, trying to look at the painting as a whole and working out what you can do to improve it. I might need a thicker brush. So I'm trying to get more vigorous um, surf coming in. So what I've, I've changed my brush to an oil painting brush, a hog's hair brush, uh, just so I can pick up this paint a bit easier. So, and it sort of goes down a bit, a bit more. 
just so it's, it's got that little bit more, I can, I can put more white paint down. So it's almost like an oil paint, really. Get it a little bit rougher. And the, the best guy at this was Sergeant. He, he, had a, he had a great facility with this white paint, which I like, I like it a lot. So the surf. You won't see too many people using a filbert brush in watercolour painting. Keep looking around, seeing, where, seeing what needs to happen. So I've had, I've had a, quite a few bits of white patches here, but I need to contrast some of them a little bit now as well. So I'll just, so at the, like, the, like at the bottom of the wave, I'll add something here just to give it a something. So it looks like that sort of trough. Where there's light, you need dark. So I've looked around it now. I've, I've done some nice white paint, which I'm really pleased with. And now I'm going to put something in the detail, some sort of, some sort of detail in the distance, which shows a bit of life. And I always like sailing boats. Um, so I'm going to put one here. And one here. A bit more white. And maybe one over here, so maybe, I don't want them too regular, so I wouldn't want to do it that distance, so I'm going to double that distance and put it over here. So that's a bit more maybe, just to clean that one up. Give it some sort of base as well. Yeah, so I've tried to change the distances around. I, if I, would, I don't want them too regularly placed. So there's the painting pretty much done, but I feel it needs something extra, and that's my trusty pencil. So I've got a little 4B pencil here. And I'm just gonna give some, some of these rocks a little bit of shape, just to give it some structure. Quite like that. Sometimes I think of this as my sort of, um, Winner's lap. I, I like I like the idea of adding it. Quite enjoy it. So maybe a few marks on the beach. I don't want to put too much on it. Maybe a rock over there. Coming into here. I think that's quite interesting. Give that a bit of solidity. There's a line there. Hopefully I got that line right. Must admit I do like this part here with the boats. That they were interestingly spaced, not evenly spaced. I think it's an important factor. So the last thing to do, which is just to sign it. So here we go, James Potter. So there we go, there's the painting all done. It's a big painting, it's uh, 29 by 21 inches, so just under a full imperial sheet of paper. And it's done on Fabriano Artistico paper, and that's in a traditional white knot paper. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed doing it and uh, it's, it's tr trying to capture the whole feel of the place, which is what I'm interested in really, and not, not to over detail it. It wasn't really a detailed painting really, it was a broad painting, so not, there, there wasn't much detail in there anyway. Um, but I think it worked out quite nicely, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. We will be going on more adventures soon, so hopefully you can keep up with us on that. Uh, it's always quite fun doing the two parts of it as well, the sort of um, vlog aspect and travel part of it. I think that's interesting and, and, and I think it's relevant as well to, to landscape painting because that's what a landscape painter has to do. They have to go out a lot, they have to go and see and be in the landscape in order to find the scenes that they, they want to paint. So it's a really crucial part of painting really, travel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed all that and I uh, hope you got something from it. If you could subscribe, that would be great and uh, certainly a like. A like is great as well. Either of those is wonderful. And until next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye.